I ran across an article written quite a few years ago by an older preacher, and it was simply called Musings of a Country Preacher. And it caused me to start thinking about musings over the years of different people in different congregations and so forth and whatnot. It's kind of a, after over 55 years of preaching, it's rather a rich history. Because I can remember these different people, most of them, by remembering each congregation where we were at the time. And one of the things I noticed, and it's been true visiting with other preachers and elderships and other faithful members, that there's always a problem with people being, some people, some people being regular in their assembling with the saints. I think we're aware of Hebrews chapter 10, verse 25, where the scripture reads, not forsaking the assembling of yourselves together, as the manner of some is, but exhorting one another, and so much the more as you see the day approaching. Now, without getting into the matter of what is the day approaching, rather obvious when you read through the book of Acts that there are several assemblies, but we know from the teaching of the Bible concerning worship on the first day of the week that that's not an option. If you are able as a member of the church, a Christian, you're ready to assemble because you're commanded to assemble and you love God and when you love him, you'll keep his commandments. You know what goes on in that worship because you've been taught as a Christian what goes on in that worship. Thus, before the worship ever takes place, before the Christians ever come together, one is aligning his mind with the things that ought to go on in that worship. And for those who take a leading role in that worship, they're mindful of the fact they're doing that before God. And they're doing it before the congregation. Whoever's leading prayers, mindful of the fact they're going to Heavenly Father in prayer, but the words they're using are words that guide the congregation in their prayers. They all pray together. Song leaders, mindful of the kind of songs that he chooses. And those who wait on the Lord's table are mindful of the prayers they offer and why they're there and what the supper is, what the emblems represent, that they're showing forth the death of Christ till he come again. When it comes time to engage in the act of contributing of our means, people must be thinking about that beforehand or they can't really give as they ought. They're mindful of the fact they ought to be cheerful givers. Paul even says that we ought to grow in this grace. He calls giving a grace, a favor. Most of the time, grace is used in talking about the salvation God extends to man that man can't earn, nor does he deserve, can't merit. But in this case, Paul in 2 Corinthians 8 and 9, called the giving of our means, our contribution of our means, a grace, opportunity to give. Christianity is giving, move giving from Christianity and you destroy it. Everything about Christianity is giving, even of our time and our planning and our purposing and being in the worship assemblies. And I specifically have in mind, of course, here the worship assembly of the first day of the week worship, as I've been talking about. Maybe the people who are hearing me now don't need this sermon. But I think all of us from time to time need to be reminded why we're coming together on the first day of the week. Somebody might be saying, but this is Wednesday night. Yes, but the elders have called the church together in this form, in this fashion. To hear a message like this and engage in prayer together. And to hear a lesson taught from God's word. But I'm thinking particularly of how easy it is for people to forget about. And I don't know why they don't make it a habit in their life early on and become a Christian. 
but they don't, and that is assembly with the saints. They don't usually forget to assemble when they go to work, earn a paycheck. They know if they miss those very much, they won't have a job. And they don't seem to miss a lot of things. And so when I read this little musings of a country preacher, I thought maybe it can help us. He writes like this, and he says, attendance at worship last Sunday was might poorly. I don't reckon I ought to grumble because this congregation had a bunch of sick members. And when you add to that all of our shut-ins, we don't have too many to fill the pew. But last Sunday, I went ahead and preached to the few who were present. Only thing was the echo in the near-empty building hurt my ears. My wife and I needed to get out. Ride a while. Let the fresh air clear my head. Made me feel good inside. In fact, in riding around, I saw miracle after miracle. Old brother Hezekiah, who had been deathly sick that morning, was roused up and riding down the highway with his fishing poles. Nothing but a miracle could have rescued Hezekiah from the jaws of death in such a short time. Now there's Ruth's brother. Ruth told me Sunday morning that his brother's back was in such awful shape, they were afraid that an operation was going to be necessary. Well, we all remembered him in prayer, and lo and behold, at 2 o'clock, there he was, at the driving range hitting golf balls. If that wasn't a quick recovery, then I don't know what is. All told, about 20 of our members had roused up and were taking nourishment in some form or other. I did notice some at the weenie roast breathing cold air, and I guess that made them sick. They couldn't assemble the next morning. To worship their God who saved them from their sin. They couldn't, they couldn't come together with the saints to sing praises to God. That wasn't that important. But they liked to eat those weenies and ride in the hayride. But what made me really happy was to see some of our shut-ins, like I've just described, such a miraculous recovery and you know we've heard about that real cold weather that's coming real cold for down here and in a lot of places it's even supposed to be cold on sunday well sunday this year is not just the lord's day it's christmas it's a holiday i wonder if they can make it to the worship on sunday morning I venture to say if they can't, they'll have a miracle before dinner and they'll be with all their family and they'll be with their friends. Yeah, we'll have to uh, sort of consider our position on miracles as to whether they still are happening or not, or at least what appears to be a miracle. So it thrills our hearts to see just where people put their priorities. Now they say they love God, but uh, I can only see that love when they do what God tells them to do. But it doesn't make a difference what I see. What God sees is he searches the hearts of men, their purposes and their motives and what they claim and then what they really do. So we ought to have a packed house next Sunday I'm sure all these sick people and these folks who think so highly of family and friends and why they even like ham and turkey awful well, they can get well real quick to assemble around the table, give out gifts. That cold weather won't make any difference then. Well, as the old preacher ended his material, he said, I got to go now and play with my smallest young. He's going to be a farmer. And I'm going to be the goat. Tin cans will be easy to eat.
after what I've just swallowed. Well, I hope that'll make a little difference as to how important that really hard scripture is to understand and routinely apply when the inspired word says, not forsaking the assembling of yourselves together as the manner of some is, but exhorting one another and so much the more as ye see the day approaching. Hebrews 10, 25. Thank you. I hope that hit right square in the middle of somebody's heart that needs it.